Hello, welcome back to Funtime Crafts 24-7. This is another Let's Make video. And uh, what we're making today is we are using the Anna Griffin Create 9 perfume box dies. Uh, but we're going to ad-lib them a bit. And we are going to make some super fun stretched or stacked boxes um, that look like this. That house really fun items. Um, I wanted to give you a bit of a inspiration uh ideas on what to you know put in the perfume box like this is the regular size this is what the dyes actually make is this size right here it's a super fun size so the uh, top pops up like so this is what the inside looks like and like that well the cool thing about this box is you can put all kinds of things in it you could put a uh, lotion in it you could put bubble bath in it um you can put obviously perfume in it. Um, you could put um, like different styles of like if somebody's like a cook um, or you traveled and you found some really fun like maybe syrups or things like that. Spices uh, fit really nice in this size of box. Um, the other thing I thought too was is you could actually take the regular size box and you can actually cut it down, cut the top off of it and just use utilize the box portion of it. Um, like this and you can put um to like cut the top off and just have it as a regular box so this is like roughly five by three and uh you could put uh these are these are uh hot cocoa bombs but these could be bath bombs like it fits to really nice size like this is bath bomb size but these are actually uh, hot cocoa bombs um you could put those in there um you could put like a fun pair of socks in this. You could do driving gloves or mittens. Um, there's like all kinds of stuff you could actually put in this. Um, my mom and I were uh, kind of spitballing ideas, um, trying to figure out uh, other uses for uh, this box as well. And she had a really good idea and said, you could actually do a cookie stack. Um, stack up uh, cookies and slide those into the box. And that would be super fun as well. Um, so any kind of like, um, like, uh, chef, uh, Jean-Pierre, he has a line of, uh, flavored oils. So he has like a special truffle oil. He has a uh, vinaigrette, um, like vinegars and stuff, cooking vinegars. Um, he sells all sorts of products uh, that actually fit, that would fit in these boxes too. And then obviously there's the <laughs> original purpose that, <laughs> that it was created for. Uh, which is a beverage box <laughs> uh, like this, <laughs> this size of bottle. Um, and so this size of bottle, this is, this happens to be G rated. This is a sparkling cider, Martinelli's sparkling cider. So this is three eighths by 12 and a half. And this box is roughly, uh, let's see, this box is, oh, whoops, um, about 12 and three quarters like this no this is 12 and a quarter because it's three and an eighth this is 12 and a quarter and this is like 12 and a half so any bottle that is anything in a bottle that's roughly this size and shape will fit really nice now this being only three inches it barely bulges out you can't even tell so when you put a bottle in this box you hold it at the top of the neck and then um while you're holding it firmly against the bottle as it's sliding in, you're allowing the bottle to settle down. And like you can't even you can't even tell like the bottoms like even bulged out hardly at all because the difference, the size difference isn't uh, that much. And so then also on this box, too, you have to keep it perfume style um, in order to put the lid on. And but it fits super nice, like, right. Um, like, yeah, that's a totally sturdy, awesome box. Um, the one here that I did, um, the, um, that I posted on Facebook though, this has a beautiful glass knob on the top. It's a drawer pull that I got off of Amazon. You can get about six of them for uh, about $7, a little less than $7. Um, but they're a glass and gold, uh, drawer pull or cabinet knob. And this is this the weight of the knob makes the lid a little bit heavy um so if you don't use like really stiff 300 gsm paper um it it will have a tendency to push the top of the box down and so then the knob sits a little precariously on top of the bottle um whereas this one sits really nice like this 
um, this one, the knob sits a little precarious and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, the other thing I was, um, kind of, oh, sorry about that guys. Oh, like I'm right in camera way. Um, the other thing I was, um, playing around with was, yes, yeah, see, like it fits on there and I added a, the two layers around all the sides here and I added a layer in the lid to give it, um, stability to, to like, more sturdily more sturdily hold the lid on uh but as you can see the knob being so heavy the knob is actually sitting down on the top of the bottle but um i think if you honestly if you added just a touch of tape if you added um a little bit of tape uh to to the bottom edge of the box um taped it to the lid it would be completely fine you wouldn't even have to worry about it um but it there again um it you know it fits it's just a it's not as um it's not as nice of a presentation as I was hoping with the bottle in it. Um, I checked the box size to see if the bottle would fit in it, and it worked great. Um, but I didn't actually test it because it's a little precarious to try to, like, you know, be moving the box around and everything for, like, to try to take the photos and stuff in it. Um, so I never put the lid on it with the bottle inside. And it was like, oh, that's a little precarious with that on there. But it, like I said, if you tape it, it it'll handle that beautiful knob just fine. Uh, but anyhow... Um, so there, there is that with this one, but like, like I said, for this, this guy here, um, with this lid, no problema with just your regular old paper lid, you are golden. And, um, so there you go there. And then the other thing I was thinking was I actually made a different size. Uh, this is like a nine inch, uh, size box. Uh, let me see. Uh, with it closed and I was thinking about other types of beverages yeah it's a nine inch box um other types of beverages and like you know if you had like you want to do something fun for like nieces and nephews um maybe you had some friends that have kids you're not really sure what to get them um or you have co-workers because there's all kinds of beverages that fit in this style of bottle um, that's in this one. I thought like if you had a really good friend, you haven't seen him in a while, you don't know what to get him. You want to get him a nice gift card to somebody somewhere. But like, how do you and what is a fun way to give a gift card? I thought you could make one of these boxes. So like this um, same style as that. And you put a different beverage in it. <laughs> You get one of their their uh, favorite kinds. This happens to be Henry Weinhardt's root beer. Uh, so really good for kids. Um, but there's also some uh, more adult appropriate beverages, beverages for, you know, friends and coworkers, um, just like uh, the bottle, the bottle here. All kinds of fun things come in those style of bottles. So I figured you know, right? And how fun is that? And it's attached to a gift card. <laughs> they open it and it's like their favorite beverage in a glass bottle. Like how fun is that, right? So I thought that was actually pretty cool too. So yeah, tons of things you can put in these boxes. Um, those are just a few of the ideas. And if you guys have more ideas, um, uh, and you want to share them, please put them down in the comments below because I'm sure anybody who watches the video would be so happy uh, for those ideas if they're having tons of fun making the boxes and it's like, okay, who can I give this to and what do I put in it? <laughs> and maybe they don't like any of these ideas. Uh, you could help them out and uh, give them some more inspiration. So there it is there. Yeah, so use your um, gift tags from uh, uh, Create9 and uh, do a gift card holder and a fun little beverage and like fabulous gift right like how fun is that so yeah so this is a nine inch box still pops up uh these fit in this bottle fits in it really nice it it's um a little on the like there's a lot of space in it but it it holds it just great uh and it's fun that it comes out the top like right how cool is that oh whoops yeah, 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 super, super stinking fun. So um, we probably got to get after it and um, start making our boxes because um, let me show you how to let me show you how to extend them if you want to do that. And basically, you're just going to do like I did and measure it. But actually, yeah, this is a tutorial. Let me show you. <laughs> let me show you what I did. So hang on. Let me grab some paper and we'll get to it. Okay, so I got some paper, um, and I'm using um, this pretty sturdy, um, heavyweight anagriff and cardstock. This is out of the 
uh, botanical Christmas and the holiday Christmas paper pads is where these are from. So I have these two for one bottle and I have these two for the other bottle. And um, so I was going to make you, I was going to show you how to make the largest size and then how to alter it to make it whatever size you want. Um, and we were going to go ahead and recreate that one that fits the root beer. Um, so the other thing you're going to need out of your stash is um, I have out a couple pieces of 2 by 12 inch um, matte black foil. I have, um, you'll need for each box, you'll need one one strip of 2 by 12 um, in a layering color because this is for the belly band. You'll want one and a half inch by 12 for the intricate die uh, to cut the gold piece out. And then you're going to want another inch and a half to be able to uh, cut just the intricate layer out. Um, and then you'll want to cut that intricate layer in half um, like this uh, to be able to wrap this around uh, the top. Oh, ah, here. Around the uh, top of the box like I did here. So this is the actual die. And I just split that in half all the way down. And um, you'll need... To split that in half, you'll have to keep both pieces because you're going to use one strip to wrap all the way around, but then you're going to need the second strip uh, to cut one of the scallops off, like this portion there, um, and that's all you need to glue onto the back and for the lid. And you can't, like, like you can tell because I'm pointing it out to you, but for the most part, if you're just, if it's just sitting on the table, nobody... Nobody will even notice that it's like that, that you had to a, a patchwork it in there. Um, so that's what that's for. And so, yeah, so two pieces, one and a half inch in gold, and then a two inch strip belly band, and then the top lid decoration uh, is what those are for. And so I'm using Crop at Home 2 border dies, um, Crop at Home 2 border dies, and we're going to use this one here and the layering piece um, to cut those out with. And, um, but I'm going to do two sets because I'm doing the smaller one. Um, so then, um, so then this one is going to be the tall box and I'm going to use these two pieces for the short box. Now you don't have to use scrapbook paper, but, uh, if you have, um, because what you need is you need a six and three quarter by eight and a half inch piece of paper. And you can get that out of a regular size sheet of cardstock. Um, because of how we're putting the box together. Um, and I would say 300 GSM or heavier. So if you bought Create 9 and you have this kit, it in the kit, it's that paper weight. The weight of that paper that's in the kit, that's what you want. Because it will make for really, really nice boxes. Um, if you have other weight, uh, which this, this, is, this isn't that weight... Um, it still works and even thinner than this works. Um, you just really have to be careful with how you're holding the box to where you don't scrunch it, um, or it tweaks while you're holding it because the, the paper is flimsy. So that's just other things to keep in mind. Um, so now I'm going to cut mine, but if you are using scrapbook paper, you want to look at the orientation of your paper that, that is huge. And, um, where the width so when you're looking at it, the width is uh, six and three quarter and the length is eight and a half. And you want to stick to that because um, if you do it that way, you'll end up with a piece left um, that will just, just fit your lid piece. So instead of having to use four pe or five pieces of scrapbook paper, you can use four and you'll need two pieces for the top whatever you want the top pattern to be, and then two pieces for the bottom. Um, and then de generally, whatever the bottom is, is what I cut the top out of. Um, yeah, so six and three quarters wide by, so my pattern goes this way, so I went six and three quarter by eight and a half long. And so you want to look at your paper and see like, well, do I want the bottom half or do I want the top half? And if you would prefer the top half, you want to flip it over. So yeah, just keep in mind paper, paper orientation. So then that's what you're going to have. And so then this piece right here fits. Um, where are you? 
in there, little fella? Uh, this die right here. No, not that one. Sheesh. Oh, oh, good thing this is the top. We won't have to worry about orientation on the bottom. But see, like, it just fits. Oh, no, I don't need to cut that off. But here, so you can see it on the back. So, like, you know, if you have a limited amount of paper, it fits it. And it will match. So there you go there. So that's why you're cutting it to this. If you have tons of paper, you don't care. Cut the whole thing out. Have a ball. <laughs> but I have limited paper, so uh, I'm going to cut mine out. So six and three quarter by eight and a half. And since I flipped it this way, I'll do the same thing by eight and a half. Um, the other thing is, um, and actually... You guys don't even need to watch this. What am I doing? Um, so let me finish cutting these out and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. Um, I have my pieces cut out. Uh, two for the bottom and then uh, two for the top. And so strategically what you want to do is you want to get your uh, base die here. And you want to go ahead and the top pieces, you're going to take the top and put it at the top of the paper. Making sure your direction is oriented how you want it to be um, and then you want to have the same amount of spacing that you do on this one you also want to do on uh, on the on the other one or on the next one um, because what you're going for on when you're die cutting these out for the top you want these tabs so the bottom the bottom of the box is here oh wait you can't even see that the bottom of the box is here you're going to use these two tabs right here that get cut out and so you're trying to make these tabs as even as possible and like i said when this is strategically cut so you can get the lid out of that piece of paper because it was 12 by 12 now if you're using eight and a half by 11 obviously you know you're going to be good to go but um if you're not and you need to save paper this was strategic um so yeah just make sure you have the same amount when you go to cut the other one you want to be as close to the top as possible to make these tabs as long as possible to give you something to a really good spot to adhere your box to because this is what is actually going to hold the box together so yeah placement is everything so i got an i got a pretty nice border all the way around I'm going to cut these uh, two out like this. Um, and then on for the bottom, what you're going to do is you're going to um, figure out what you want to see. And then what you're going to do is you're going to line the bottom of the bottom of the box to the bottom of the page. Um, so instead of the, the top of the box to the top on the top portion, the bottom goes to the bottom. So they coordinate, right? Um, and then this one doesn't matter as much other than if it's directional and if you have a pattern that you need to um, make continuous, you'll want to be mindful of that. So then you're going to cut two pieces out like this, two pieces out like the top, and then you're going to also cut your lid. Uh, you're going to need your lid piece. And then that's the basic construction of the box. Uh, so let me get these all cut out and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our pieces cut out. So we have our two base pieces. We have our two... Uh, top pieces and we have our lid uh, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and even off the um, base or the bottom pieces and uh, I'm just going to use my small guillotine there is a and what we're going to do is we're going to cut right on the score line where you would actually typically fold so right it's the middle line in between those three score lines there Two of them are actually from the die, and the one in the center is um, actually the line that you would fold on. So that's where we're going to cut. Um, we're just going to cut those two tabs off. Uh, and I'm just going to line it up on my guillotine trimmer here, uh, making sure it's even. And chop those off. Uh, same on this one. And that looks really good. You're just wanting to make sure they're even is all. Um, so then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, fold on and crease all your, um, all your score lines. You want to fold and crease them all. And um, 
the creasing them is a really big deal. It isn't necessarily as big of a deal on the bottom as it is the top. Because the top, if you're wanting it to um, do the perfume pop-up style, um, that's where it's very critical to really burnish all your folds. You want to give them a really good crease. So there we go there. Um, here... These, these two, these two are actually quite simple. So you're just folding the tab. You're folding uh, on the center, making sure you're lined up on that score line on the tab there. Going to just give it a little burnish. You're going to fold up the two bottom flaps, uh, just making sure they're nice and creased. And there you go there. The two bottom pieces are done now. And now this is where it's critical is the top. So you want to ignore the two flaps down here, these two tabs. They do not need to be um, folded at all. So just ignore them. Pretend like you don't see them. So you're going to turn your uh, top piece that's facing towards you. Um, you're going to turn it to the side and you're going to fold your two flaps. Um, and these, uh, these are just, you know, like those. You want to give them a good crease. Uh, make sure to press them. Give them a nice press. Um, but then you're going to turn it around and you're going to fold the middle, this middle score line here. And what you're going to do is you're going to match up this edge and this edge with that score line on the tab. And then you want to make sure that your um, two top um, lines meet each other. And then your diamonds. You want to line up your diamonds and the, and the two top edges and then this, this edge on that score line at the tab making sure that everything looks nice and symmetrical. Like so. Now with the paper, the pretty side towards you, you're going to take, and at the top of the base of the box, this fold line here, you're going to go ahead and you're going to fold it down. Um, This right here, actually, if you just wanted to do the box portion, you would also, you would cut that piece off there and then you wouldn't have the pop-up mechanism. You would just fold it, you would put it all together, and it would just be a box, and then you would just put the lid on it. But we want the pop-up me mechanism because we want it for a bottle. <laughs> so the middle line there, so there's one, two, three. The middle one is where you're folding at. And you just want to fold that down, and you want to make sure that this, this edge meets up with this edge, that score line meets up with the score line in the middle. This score line meets up with the score line on the tab. And if you, if you, when you get it lined up here at this edge and you start your, when you go to uh, crease it or to uh, press it, press towards you. It'll help push the paper in the direction you're trying to hold it in. There we go. Woohoo. Nice. Okay, and now you're going to then turn your paper and this edge is going to fold up like so. You're meeting all your diamond edges here and then you're going to give these a good press. These are the ones you want to burnish the dickens out of. Uh, you just want to make these conform to this shape or um, this style here. And then you're going to turn and you're going to burnish these too. These are the other ones you want to make sure are get good and pressed and super burnished and do them again okay now you have one more line here and you're going to go ahead and fold it down meeting the two uh, paper edges here and then that score line lines up with the tab score line there um, you also want to make sure that you're even all the way across the top um, and it once you get it even give it a press Give it a press. Uh, once it looks even, give it a press. And now I'm going to uh, burnish mine towards me so that way it's pushing the paper. Because I'm a little skewed, it's pushing the paper towards the direction I want it to go. Um, so that way I can gain a tiny bit of ground. And that actually looks pretty good to me. That looks pretty good. That's lined up. That's pretty much lined up. This might be off a tad because of the um, the piece underneath. And then this looks pretty good here as well. And then that looks even across there. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. Okay, so now that we have that all done. Okay, and then when you fold it, it lines up at the top. 
and then it lines up on the side here. So that looks really good too, right? There we go. And now um, I want to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing to this one. And I guess we'll just hurry up and do it. Um, actually, the video is going to be long and I've already had to redo this video. Uh, so let me go ahead and do the same thing to this one that I did to the, this other top. And I'll be right back. Okay, so let's do the lid now. And this one's easy. You're just going to fold on all the score lines. And you're just going to make sure that like the edges of your paper line up with the score lines. And then you're going to give it a press uh, or crease it. Burnish it. <laughs> Whichever you want to do. <laughs> okay, and then this side. Um, and you want to make sure the tabs line up with the edge of the paper on both sides. And then the score lines match up. Yeah, I've uploaded, or I uh, already made this and it didn't want to do anything. So I ended up having to redo it, which was great because I ended up brainstorming ideas with my mom. So when you fold the tabs in, you want to make sure the top edge of the tab lines up with the top edge of the box. Give it a pinch and then burnish it. Um, same, do that on all the tabs like that. Sometimes they want to like, when you go to fold them, they want to fold like down or up or weird. Sometimes they just fold. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so my mom and I were brainstorming, and um, I thought the cookie idea was, like, do a cookie tower. Oh, my gosh, how cute would that be? That would be a super fun gift, um, a gift idea, especially, like, if you want to do your neighbors and stuff, friends at church, things like that. And you could just do the little box uh, for the little cookie towers. Uh, you wouldn't even have to do the perfume box uh, portion of it. You could just... Um, cut the top off and just use the box and the lid would be fun too okay so now um i found when i was putting these together oh my gosh they don't make score tape like how they used to um so yeah i've been using glue accompanied with score tape so basically score tape sticks it down and then the glue makes it permanent so let's go ahead and do the lid and you want to put in the center of the tabs you want to go ahead and put score or tear tape down and then um, uh, give your score tape a press so it makes it easier when you go to take the backers off. I put it right in the middle of the tab uh, so that way I can put glue above and below the uh, tape. And that way it um, adheres better. Okay, so I'm taking the score tape off of the side, the flap that has the two tabs on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put glue on it. And after we get glue on the tabs, we're going to want to push the tabs in. So that way it makes it easier when we go to line them up. You're not fighting to get the tab in. So when you, um, you're going to go ahead now and you're going to fold the two flaps up and you're going to adhere your tab. You want to line the edge of your paper up with the edge of this flap and then the top edge with the top edge of the tab. And you're going to press and then burnish. Give it a good press. Uh, flip it over and do the same on this one. Line up the two top edges and then line up the two sides so they're square. Give it a press and then burnish. Okay, now do flip it over and do the other side. The other flap with the two tabs. Uh, put your glue on. Don't get too much, otherwise it'll get schmutzy. Like, that might be too much there. Uh, go ahead and push the flaps in so you don't have to fight them. And then bring your flap up. Meet your edges and your top. Give it a press. And then burnish. Uh, flip it around. Meet the two top edges and the two sides. Give it a press. And then burnish. And voila! There's your lid. Perfectly square. Make sure not to get schmutzies on yours. <laughs> I got a little glue schmutz there, but that's okay. Okay, so now what you want to do is... Uh, this is where the fun part is. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to attach the top uh, to the bottom. We're attaching the uh, bottom portion on top of... The top portion 
And the reason you're doing that is so that way when you go to slide the bottle in, it doesn't catch on anything. It's just nice and smooth all the way down to the bottom. Um, so now what you want to do is when you're looking at your top like this, so this is the pop-up portion, the two tabs at the bottom, you want to run score tape across the middle of those two tabs and then you want to put glue on them. Uh, make sure to press your score tape down or your tear tape down uh, to get the backer off easier. And then go ahead, peel the backer off, and then put glue above and below and maybe even on the score tape. And if you put it on the score tape, it will help you to shimmy and get it straight. So now what you're going to do is you're going to line up this edge that you cut with that fold line there on, on this one here, the fold line on this one. And then um, you're going to line up your score line with this this score line tab with that score line, the middle with the middle, and then this edge with this edge. Okay. Right in the center. Okay, now when you get it lined up, just lightly, lightly press it. Don't don't put don't use your muscles. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna um you're gonna flip it over to where you have the flat edge here, not the one with the tabs, and you're gonna fold it over to make sure you're all lined up. You're nice and lined up and every everything looks lined up. It's all symmetrical. And if you're happy with the way this looks, you wanna flip it back over and you wanna give it a good burnish. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make these two pieces become one piece by pressing the glue and the tape into the papers. So use your muscles on this part. <laughs> but don't use anything sharp or you'll scrape or gouge the paper. Um, a bone folder has kind of a rounded edge, which makes it really nice for burnishing paper, bur burnishing your uh, tape into your paper. So flip it over and make sure you don't have any glue. We're good and happy. So there's the first portion. Yeah, and then after you get these two pieces made, it's just like making a box. So simple. Okay, so stretch this guy out. Um, put score tape down here. Right in the middle. I put it in the middle so I can get glue above and below the score tape. Burnish the score tape or press the score tape so you can get the backer off easier. Pull the backer off and then apply glue. And you want to make sure to get glue all the way to the edges too. Not too much to where it gushes out, but um, enough to where it holds all the way to the edge. So there again, there's those three lines. You're doing the one in the center. So line up the top edge with the line that is in the center. Uh, and then, and then um, score line on the tabs, you're going to line those up. The middle score line, you're going to line that up. And then your paper edge to paper edge. Just give it a slight, really light press and then flip it over and make sure everybody's happy and lined up and symmetrical. Is it? Is it all happy? And this looks happy. Happy, happy. So flip it back over and give it a press. Burnish the bejesus out of it. The little dickens out of it. Use your muscles on this side. Make it become one. <laughs> we are molding them together. Yeah. Okay. Now, wipe your excess glue off if you got a little crazy with it. So um, that way it doesn't make everything stick. Okay, and now it's just like... This is just like the other ones. So what you want to do is you want to put score tape. Can you guys see everything? Um, you're going to put score tape along the whole tab and then on the baby tab. Put it in the center so that way you can put glue above and below the, the, the tear tape. And then um, on these, you want to get glue. When you put the glue on, you want to be able to get glue all the way to the top edge and the bottom edge of the tabs. Um, and that will give you better corners 
uh, for them it, it to stick together. Like your corners will have a better chance of gluing together and giving you a nicer pop-up top. Um, so now we pressed our backers. Press, press, and now peel your backers off. This thing is a uh, behemoth of a box because it's like hard to keep it all <laughs> in the camera. <sighs> yeah, I'm trying to hurry on this video only because the last one was really long and they don't they don't like to upload when they're long. Ooh, they take a month of Sundays. Oh man, and then I still have to do them anyways because the sound is off. <gasps> ay ay ay. But that's okay. So all the way to the top edge and all the way to the bottom edge, both sides. Not too much, though, because it'll get schmutzy. However, if you use Art Glitter Glue, which this is Art Glitter Glue. Oh, you guys ask, and this is so hideous looking. But this is Art Glitter Glue. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? I've had this bottle for years. I just keep filling it. And it's the big Mama Jamma. It's the 8-ounce bottle, so it's, like, nice. It's a nice size. You don't run out too often. Um, but anyhow, yeah, I, I run out quite often only because I make so much paper crafting. <laughs> okay, now you're going to line up the bottom, like where these flaps are, that line with this line, this edge with this score line here on the top of the tabs, and then this line to this line. And then you're not going to worry about this one just yet. Just get these three done first. But make sure to put this one on top of that one. So line up the top there, in the middle, and then down here at the bottom. Okay. Lightly press it. Don't make it permanent. And then you're going to come back up here. And you're going to line up this edge with this fold. And then the top edge to the top edge. And then this, this line here with the bottom line there. Is that happy? Okay, now let's flip it over. Ready? Um, just lightly flip it over and make sure everybody looks nice and symmetrical and happy. Do the top edges. Are your top edges lining up? Are your diamonds lining up? It's off there. Our, our tabs line up here. Yeah, it's... Oh, it's off right there. Oof. So this, this has to go over. Oh, see, it's off there. I wonder if that's going to make a difference. Oh, here, let me put some more glue on that. I'm pretty sure you're going to have a noticeable something or other there. I'm not sure how I got off there. Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's see if it's going to be fine. Oh, no. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's this. It's down. <gasps> I can't do anything about that, so let's just go ahead. And it's just barely... It's not completely dreadful, so I think let's just wing it, and let's just see what happens. So let's go ahead and burnish this down, and then we'll just get it rocking here. Um, now let's flip it back over and burnish the other side. We're, we'll just see what happens here, and then that way it'll be a learning curve for you guys as well. So if it's a tiny bit askew... Uh, we'll see if there's any bearing on what happens to it. So now um, I like to flip it over and then just fold the first one in like this. And then put the tape on. See, that looks good. So what does this look like? And that one looks good. So it's literally right here. So what does this look like? Oh, but that looks great. I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be fine. So if you're a tiny bit off, don't worry about it. You can probably make the difference up on the last fold. Um, but I like to leave the middle one flat 
and then just fold this one over and then we're going to glue it together. Um, but that way we can leave it to set up. Um, and it's not, um, stressing any, any of the, um, uh, glue tabs. We're not stressing any of them. So put your tear tape in the center or your score tape, whatever you're using. And then, uh, go ahead and press your backers, press them so they come off easy. And then take your backers off. Make sure your uh, tape is all the way on the tabs, though, because you don't want to accidentally stick your pieces together. See, that's why you have to press the backers. And then get your glue on. Uh, top and bottom. Make sure to go all the way to the top, all the way to the top, and all the way to the bottom of each tab. Some in the center. Okay, and then fold your paper over and just making sure you're lined up on all your all your score lines. Get your excess glue off. And then on this one, you're making sure you're lined up on the top edge and lined up on that embossed, this embossed edge here. And then press. And then this one is going to be where it is. So go ahead and burnish the dickens out of it. Press the dickens out of it. Seal them together. Make them become one. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to let this just set up for a second. Um, yeah. We're going to let that set up and dry for a minute. And uh, while this one's setting up, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to cut um, how to, how to measure these pieces and then measure for like, instead of going the tallest you can be, you can pick how, what the height is that you want. Um, so what you want to do is you want to keep these tabs. Um, but, or no, no, you, you're going to wait on the top pieces. You're going to cut these tabs off. So there again, you're cutting off at that score line on both of the bottom pieces Oh. There we go. See we cut it we cut that middle score line off. And then you're going to do that on this one. See see that middle line right there? That's where you're cutting off. That's your fold line. You're cutting you're cutting it at the fold line like that. Okay. So you're done with those two. And now what you want to do is, so you want to measure. So where's our little Henry Weinhard? Henry, you're on deck. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to measure the height of your item. So this is, this is a nine inches. This is nine inches tall. This bottle is basically nine inches uh, when we measure it. And so what we want is we want the total height of our bottle to or our box to be nine inches. Okay, so what you're going to do, though, is uh, when you measure, when you measure the box, you want to take one inch off of your measurement because we're, when we go to cut these, we're not we're not measuring the height of the top. But we do know that the top with the lid closed is one inch. So since this is nine inches, we're going to take one inch off, which leaves us eight inches total. So we know the height of the box portion, this from here below the lid to the bottom of the box. So from, so, so from here to here has to be eight inches tall. So this base is five inches. We know that because this is a five by three box. So we have our five, we have five. So we need three more inches. So then we know now we know that this uh, piece here, um, when we measure from the top of the box edge down, we need three inches here. Oh, no, no, that's a lie. We need three inches for box spacing. So then what you want to do is you want to add a half inch for a glue tab. 
So you want this piece to be three and a half inches. So say you were um, doing, will this fit in a normal box? Um, pretend like we're going to put this in it. Is it five inches? Oh, it's seven. Oh, perfect. We want to put this in that box. It's seven inches. So we want the total height to be seven. So we're going to minus an inch. So we want the base to be six inches. And so we have a five inch on the bottom, right? So we're going to minus five. So we have an inch left we have to make up for. So that this would be one inch. And then we're going to add a half inch. So it would be one and a half inches. So you would measure from here down one and a half inches and cut. So that gives you a half inch glue tab and then your one inch of space that you would need to make up for this. But since Henry is nine, Henry gets one inch minus off for the lid. So it's eight. And we have five. So we take that off. We need three. And now we have to add a half inch for our glue tab. So we're going to cut this at measuring from here down. So basically... Um, actually, we're going to measure on the back. So from this point here down, we need three and a half inches. So let's do that. So put your, so put this point on your trimmer at three and a half. So this three and a half, we're going to put that point on three and a half. And we are going to cut. Okay. And now we're going to do both. We have to do both pieces. And this is going to give us our nine inch box. So put the point at the top, that top edge at three and a half, three and a half. So, and trim. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and, um, on, so we can discard these. We're going to want to, we want to flip this over. And what we want to do is we want to measure our half inch and put a line at our half inch for our half inch glue tab. So I just take my T ruler and I put it at the bottom of the page and um, I measure up. I go, so this starts at zero. So I just go to a half inch. So I put that at the bottom of the paper. Well, normally I do. Jeez. It's not, it's grouchy day. <laughs> My heavens, seriously. Okay, that's, that's a half inch there. Normally it grips. There. And then I can usually slide it up. There, there we go. That's gripped. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line. And I'm just going to use a little, um, I'm just going to use, oh, uh, not that one. That's a marker. I'm going to use a fine liner so I don't have a very big line. So I, I've got my half inch tab there. And you want to make sure it is a uh, spot on. Otherwise, you're going to be off. Eh, you can make up the difference when you glue them together, but it's better if you don't have to. So there's our half inch. So then measure, put your T ruler on half inch at the bottom of the paper. Come on, man. Come on, son. Oh, there we go. And is that half? Oh, cool, it's half. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and then this is where you're going to glue. So if you measure from that score line to that line there, that should be uh, three and a half inches. Or three inches. <laughs> that should be three inches. And it's three inches. So we're totally good to go. Three inches right there. Okay, and is this one three inches? Yeah. Yep. Three inches. Oh, we're perfect. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now what you're going to do is you're going to fold all these up. Um, you're going to fold all these up just like we did the other one. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, got those all folded up and I've already put together the lid. Um, so now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and let's unfold this uh, top piece here and lie it flat. And we want to put um, some score tape on our all the way um all the way across our glue tab all the way across our glue tab there 
uh, right down the center. And then make sure to press your uh, your score tape or tear tape down to get the be able to get the back off easier. Press it down and then put glue on it on the above and below the line, or not above above the line, above the score tape, on the score tape and below the score tape. So now what you want to do is you want to take your bottom piece and you want to line this edge up with your line. And then your tab with the tab edge and then this line. So then your score line in the middle and then this edge with this edge. And I'm just giving it a light press to see if that's where we want to go ahead and we want it to be. And make sure everything looks symmetrical. And it looks great. So I'm going to flip it back over and burnish it. Really good. Oh, whoops. And you'll want to get your excess glue off so you don't get your pretty box in it. <laughs> okay, that looks awesome. Okay, so let's let that sit over there. And then we're going to go ahead and do this one as well. So now you have your two pieces, and you're just going to put the box together just like uh, the other one, just like we did this this one here. Um, so I think um, I'll go ahead and do this one, but then I'll just assemble the box um, like I did that one. Um, and whoops, I need glue. Uh, off camera. Uh, yeah, because it's exactly the same way. So this edge, the middle score line, the tab score line, and then this, uh, the top of this paper to that line. Give it a light press. And then um, flip it over, fold it to make sure everything looks symmetrical. And it does. It looks great. So flip it back over and burnish the dickens out of it. Make them become one. Press. Use your muscles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. Ah, they are one. Cool. Okay, and now um, we can just pop these uh, together. And um, let me put this together and I'll be right back. Okay, so got that one put together, and we're going to let that set uh, aside to dry. And so now you want to take, uh, let's take this one. Let's go ahead and pop the top in, and that way we can uh, put, turn it upside down on the table. And uh, now what you want to do is you want to fold the, fold three of the bottom flaps in, and on, on the last one, you're going to put score tape on it. Um, press the score tape down and remove the backer. Ah, there we go. Oh, come on, son. There we go. Okay, and now what you want to do is you want to open two of the flaps, and then you want to apply glue to the one that's left. And a fair amount, because this is what is holding the bottle. So, yeah, you totally want this. Um, so then fold and fold your second flap back down and put glue on the top of it, holding the box square as you're putting the glue on. You want to make sure to hold it square because this is where it's going to live when it's all said and done. Fold the next flap down. So this is your third flap. And then you want to go ahead and you want to put glue on the last flap that has the score tape on it. And you want to make sure to go all the way to the edges, not too... Not too far so it doesn't smudge out. Um, the reason you're putting it on this one is because um, it'll help the score tape shimmy. But also um, it will look the nicest because uh, you won't have excess glue on the edges because that's that flap is not exactly square to the bottom of the box. So um, with this uh, being square and you're happy, let's flip it over and then we're going to burnish the bottom of the box. So get a long ruler or something long that you can... Whoops put down in the middle and burnish the bottom of the box with 
just press it on the bottom, uh, press the bottom flaps down. Just like trying to press the glue into the paper. Um, just be gentle, not, not too rough so you don't rip your box or poke a hole in it or something. Okay. And then once you feel like you've got it, okay, we'll double check and look how sturdy that is. And then look how nice, right? Is that, isn't that nice? Awesome. And then look how crisp, like, right? That didn't matter. What? Totally cool. And then let's see, where's the lid of that one? Okay. And then this, that's the lid. And look how fun that is, right? And now all you have to do is decorate it. Uh, so the um, piece de resistance is to see if the bottle fits, right? That is where the rubber hits the road. So here's our um, sparkling cider <laughs> or whatever beverage we like. <laughs> and it fits in the box, right? And then pop the lid on. There, see? And see, because it's the paper, like, there's still room for the lid to go down. So you could tie a nice little ribbon around the middle here to doll it up even more. And maybe use one of the tags that's in this kit um, to, you know, with the ribbon and tie it off. And then we can decorate it all up. And then look how lovely that is. Isn't that just gorgeous? So now what we want to do is, oh, okay. So let's go ahead and, um, well, here, we still have to decorate. <laughs> Um, so there we go, right? Um, okay, so now let's do this one. Actually, let me put this one together and, um, I'll put this one together and I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, so here we are. Um, what was I doing? I think I was just gluing these together. Um, so I got the belly bands glued together and now what, um, and so then I also cut this, this one apart, this, um, uh, intricate uh, border die I cut it in half so that would give me um, a border around the top and uh, basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to start on what would be the back of the box and I'm going to start um, I'm going to put glue on the back of this and just start um, forming this around the edge of the box and I'm going to glue this all the way around the bottom of the box and when I come to a corner I'm going to crease it like that so let me get these uh, borders on the lids glued on and I'll be right back Okay, so now that those are glued on like that, like, great, right, how pretty is that? Um, you need to cut a scallop out for there. And then we got it there, too. Like, right? Isn't that beautiful? Like, that is just gorgeous, right? Um, so let's cut a scallop out for there and one for there. And literally, you're just cutting out a scallop. And then one for there. And then I, I just apply glue to the bottom and then just a little tiny piece of score tape in between those two um edges i actually do it double to get, get it thicker um because in uh, essentially that one is actually going to sit on the top two edges and so i thought the um if you put the little score tape in there, this is eighth inch. It would actually add bulk and make them the same height. That was the thought process, and it seemed like it works, so <laughs> I'm sticking with it. And so then you just line up one edge to the other edge, and all you are trying to do is center it and make it look as seamless as possible. And there you go. Uh, just like that and like you don't really even notice it like if you're just glancing like you don't even know it uh, I, I don't anyways I think it works just perfect so I'm gonna do that to this one as well and uh, yeah let me do that and then I'll be right I'll be right back okay so now what we want to do now that we have those on right and there do you even really even notice that like seriously you don't even, you know, hardly even notice it. Um, and it's in the back. So as long as you remember to put it in the back. <laughs> okay, so now for these, what you want to do is you want to put score tape in the middle of it. And then you want to put glue on it. And now these are not going to go all the way around. And that's the reason you have to have something in the center um, for a decorative piece. A decorator piece. And you can do a sentiment. You could do a... I did a gift on this one. 
And like, I thought that was like really pretty. Um, so you can do just about anything in the center there. Just something to cover up the fact that this um, doesn't go all the way around. Okay, so score tape down the center and then glue. And then I just start like, um, like with one scallop and I line the center up with the center line. Okay, and then I'm going to eyeball it. So I'm trying to eyeball that this is going down this line here. But um, when I get to a corner, so I'm going to try to make sure it's straight. When I get to a corner, I, I pinch it to crease it to give it a corner. Then I press it. Then when I get to the next corner, I crease it, eyeballing it, hopefully down the center, and then crease it to give it a corner, to give it an edge, and then eyeball it down, hopefully... And then before I I commit to this one, I make sure I'm I make sure I'm lined up with that one there. But then I give the, go back and give this one a pinch to give it a corner, and then do the same on this one. Pinch as I'm wrapping it around to give it a corner. And then it, see it almost fits, but it doesn't quite. So you have to put a pretty something. So now what you can do is pull the top like that, and then go lay it on the table, and then burnish it uh, with something you know long. Now you can actually put your hand in here. And so if you want to go ahead and flip the box over on all the sides and burnish all the sides down, you could totally do that. And that would be super helpful. Um, it's a little bit harder on that one, so you have to have something longer on the taller one. But um, it's totally doable, especially if like your Tim Holtz ruler or a T-ruler or something like that. Okay, so there we go. Right? Super duper fun. And then I was just going to pop this in the center and call it good on this one. Oh, we're at an hour. Sorry, guys. This thing is like forever. Um, and hopefully it will upload. Oi, oi, oi. All right. Well, there we go. Okay, press. You should glue these down. I'm just putting it on for now because uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to be done <laughs> with this. Hang on. Let me put this on the other one and put the sentiment on. And then we'll see what they look like. Hold on. Okay. So there you go. There's the uh, two different uh, sizes of beverage boxes. And um, the uh, there it is. Application. Ah, executed perfectly. Uh, yeah, these are just gorgeous. So if you don't put the glass knobs on them and you just do the paper, like, OMG, these are really, really fun and make for a great gift, right? Isn't that awesome? Okay, now help us brainstorm down in the comments. What would you put in your gift boxes or what, what are you going to put in your gift boxes? Let me know what you guys think about the, um, stretched or stack, stacked perfume boxes and... Um, if you guys thought this was helpful and fun, entertaining, and all of that stuff, could you please do all the things down below? Like, comment, share, subscribe. <laughs> um, I would really appreciate it, and it helps the channel out. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for hanging out, and until next time, happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye.